All right, today we're going to talk about section 3.2 in our BJU Press Algebra 2 textbook. We're going to be talking about identifying functions, um, either from their graphs or by looking at their set forms. We're also going to evaluate functions using function notation, and then we're going to graph some linear functions. So let's look at these two relations, okay? We'll call this release, relation F and relation G, okay? In our first graph, um, let's look at x equals 2, when x equals 2. So when x equals 2 in our first graph, y is going to be equal to 3, okay? So that means we have the, the point to 3 for relation f. In our second graph, there are two possible answers for when x is equal to 2. We have 1, 2, 1, and then we have 1 equals 1, or y equals 4. So which one do you write? Um, both of these graphs represent relations. However, this first graph here is a special relation called a function, okay? So it is a special type of relation, which we call a function. that this is going to be a special kind of relation called a function is that there's only one y value for any x value. So any x value that you pick, there's only going to be one possible y value that matches it. All right, so... Points that have the same domain element lie on a vertical line. So we can use a, something called the vertical line test to see if a graph represents a function or not. We call this the vertical line test. And I'll go ahead and put the test down here for you. Vertical line test, which says this. If two or more points of a graph lie on a single vertical line, then the relation is not a function. So if we look back at what I drew at the beginning of the lesson, you can see that relation G fails the vertical line test because there's two places where if you were to draw a vertical line, you have two points on that line. So that means that this is a big fail. We can also look at set notation and determine if a relation is a function or not. So let's look at example one. Which says which relations are functions. And so you have this relation, f is equal to 1 comma 5, 3 comma negative 1, 3 comma 2, 5 comma 4. So that's relation f. And then you have relation g, that is this set, negative 1, 5, 
2 comma negative 1 and then 3 comma 5. So again, we are just looking for a y value to be repeated, right? Or for an x value to be repeated with the same y. So, for example, 3, negative 1, and 3, 2 says that we have an x value that goes to negative 1, and then that x value again repeats itself and then goes to 2, right? Well, we don't want that. We don't want x to repeat. So it has the same domain element twice with a different y value. So since we will say that relation G, I'm, not, I'm sorry, relation F is not a function. But you might say, well, look at relation G. Relation G repeats its five. Right? We've got a 5 here and a 5 here. Well, that's okay because those are both range. The domain never repeated itself. So relation G is a function. It's okay to repeat your range. You just can't repeat your x. Another way you could have determined if these two relations were a function or not is you could have graphed them and then applied the vertical line test. Um, sometimes functions are described by function rules or rules. So in that case, range elements just depend on the domain. And therefore, a variable represents the domain element is an independent variable and the variable that represents the range is dependent. So the range depends on the domain. Um, so the domain is independent where the range is dependent. So this is how we write rules for functions using function notation. We would write something like this, f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, which just means that your y is dependent is equal to 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3 is your function rule, where x is your domain or your independent variable. So you're plugging in x values to get y values. So in this notation, x represents the independent. f of x represents the dependent, right? So f of x, remember, is the y now. When we say f of x, we are saying function of x. So f of x, functions of x, f equals, those all mean the same thing. And you have to be able to go in between all three. Okay, like you've got to know that f of x means y. Okay, if we have something that looks like this, let's say we have f parentheses 6, we're actually saying f of 6, which means the value of the function when x is 6. Okay, so we're saying when x is 6. So we're saying plug in 6 for x. We're saying find y when x is 6. Okay, that's all we're doing. So function notation is going to be used from here on out, and it's also going to be used for the rest of this textbook. So make sure that you understand what it means. Let's look at example two, where we need to evaluate f of x equals 2x plus 3 if x equals negative 5, 1, and 4. So we're going to start 
with negative 5. So here's our function rule. And we're going to plug in negative 5 for x. Okay, and then we'll evaluate um, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 plus 3 gives us negative 7. So now let's do 1, f of 1. So we end up with 5. And then f of 4. we end up with 11. So to describe the function in set folder notation is by pairing each value of the independent variable with the corresponding value of the dependent variable. So for example, we would say our function is equal to the set of x comma, instead of y, I'm going to write f of x. So our function is all the ordered pairs such that f of x equals 2x plus 3, that's our function rule, if x is equal to negative 5, 1, or 4. All right? So we just evaluated all that information. So I could say that our function f is equal to these ordered pairs. Negative 5, negative 7, 1, 5, and 4, 11. So in example, the domain negative 5, 1, 4 was specifically stated. If no domain is given, then we're just going to assume the set of all real numbers. That means our function is continuous because not only are we going to use 2 and 1, but we're going to use 1 half. Not only are we going to use 1 half and 1, we're also going to use 1 fourth, 1 third, 2 fourths. We're going to use everything. We're going to use every single number in between all the numbers. So it's one continuous line. And so when we, when we do those, we, when we graph them, we want to make sure we connect all of our points to show we have all the real numbers in between. It also means that the function contains an infinite number of ordered pairs. One such thing that is like that is called a linear function. So a linear function is a function whose graph forms a line. So notice that the word line is in linear, right? That is definitely a hint on what a linear function is. So to graph a linear function, we get several ordered pairs um, by substituting values of x and then plotting those. We also have what's called the standard form of a line. which is ax plus by is equal to c. However, if we want to graph that, it's not very easy to graph this because we haven't solved for y. So I'm going to walk you through an example on how to graph a linear function when it's in standard form. So let's say we want to graph this function x and y, the ordered pairs, the ordered pairs such that x plus y is equal to 5. So in order to graph this function, I want to first solve for y. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I get y is equal to negative x plus 5. Then I'll put that in function notation, so I'm going to replace y with f of x. And then I'm going to select some x values. I'm going to select, I like to do a few x values. Um, 3 is always a good number. So I like to do a negative, a 0, and a positive. That usually works for me. So I'm going to do negative 1. So I have negative, negative 1, 
plus 5, which ends up being 6. Then I'm going to do 0, which ends up being 5. And then I'm going to do 1, which ends up being 4. So if I were to plot these points, when x was negative 1, my y was 6. So my y was 5. And then when x was 1, my y was 4. So now I have some plotted points. And I'm going to go ahead and graph that by connecting those dots to show that it's continuous. So this, this all depends on the condition that x plus y equals 5 is the same as y equals negative x plus 5, which is the same as f of x equals negative x plus 5. So we have to use definitions and properties in order to get to where we're at now. So in each case, x is independent. And y is dependent. So y or f of x is the dependent. Okay, all are going to have the same graph. So you, you can go in between all three of those. All right, go ahead and try some problems on your own.